I'm a bit worried here. We've got to take you to the doctors. Is she alright? Was it COVID symptoms? No. No, she's got a sugar headache. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Uh, I'm well, but I'm kind of lonely today. It's, the, the, Mrs B has uh, gone for like a morning like meet up with her mates with the dogs. She's kind of like Paris Hilton with the dogs in her bag, I guess. Anyhow, today we're doing a 4-3-2-1 video, part of a playlist that I've done before. I haven't done one of these for quite a while and I love doing it. It's four three ingredient recipes. When I say ingredients, it's kind of like items. So you can really elaborate with it. Two try one time in your life. And I love doing it. The feedback on that is normally really fun too. So thanks as always for the suggestions. And today we've got some proper stonkers. We've got a Nutella milkshake. We've got a spinach tortellini. We've got carrot fritters. And we've got Samoa cookies, which we're going to start with because that is a TikToky TikTok one. Let's go. It's going to be good. Anyhow, so we're going to start with the dessert, or in this case, uh, three ingredient Samoa uh, cookies. Uh, first of all, the first thing we do is actually preheat our oven. Now, I bloomin love Samoa cookies, coconutty, chocolatey goodness. I actually discovered them when I was in America working legitimately on a Girl Scout camp. It was amazing times, and those Girl Scout cookies, thin mints, things like that, so good. This one is made with banana and coconut. It's effectively two ingredients, but you need that chocolate on there. So, thank you. <laughs> coconut. Yeah, this is desiccated coconut. Um, which I nearly said decapitated, but it's kind of along the same lines. Just over 120 grams of them. We need a ripe banana to match with this. Yep, just a ripe banana like this. How do you know it's ripe? Because it says it on the banana. So it took me like two minutes to, to do that. Amazing, isn't it? How a banana looks so sort of dry and like, okay, it's, it's nice, but when you mash it up, it suddenly becomes this sort of moist, squelchy, completely different textured fruit. It is, isn't it? Coconut going in. Oh, see how it's clinging together. Amazing. I have never done this before. This was a TikTok one, as I say. I find coconut all right. That's way better in my opinion once it's toasted. Um, but the moisture of that banana is making the coconut grip to it. I think I'm gonna get some clean hands in it. Just wanna make sure I've got enough banana in there. Oh, there we go, that's better. Clump it all together. I don't know if we'll get every single speck of coconut, but yeah, that will do. So you can grab that and shape it, which is exactly what we need to do next on a lined baking tray. That just feels a bit weird though. Okay, so I've got my lined baking tray, uh, a little icing pen frosting tip thing. And for complete transparency, I can see you. Uh, I added another half a banana to it. It gave it a lot more moisture. And what I do like about it, I didn't mash it up fully. I've got these teeny little banana chunks in there now, but you can see it's much more like a sort of tennis ball. I can really mold that shape. And that is, it looks like a big snowball, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> but remember, this is just two ingredients so far. So I can grab a nice handful like that, get it fairly thick, but make sure it's consistent in height. Oh, I quite like that. That looks awesome. And then you could get a massive frosting tip if you want. They're like little coconut donuts. All right, folks, so long story short, that was really horrible to do. I ended up wetting my hands to shape it and I've done okay. Um, that took probably about 15 minutes and I only got, I got one more probably to, I could get seven out of it. But just when you shape it, it, it all breaks apart. So maybe I needed two bananas. The recipe said one medium banana with that amount of coconut. So I've already added a bit more moisture to it anyway, but that doesn't matter. I feel like when we bake it now, well, it's going to go two ways. It's either going to split or it's going to hold it together. It's going to like loosen up and grip it and toast a coconut. About 20 minutes, but uh, do keep your eye on it. Anyhow, main course. Yes, main course. And this is what I love about the refrigerated aisle, particularly when it comes to pasta. Sometimes you get like uh, raviolis and gnocchi. This is a chicken and bacon tortellini. So we've got pasta with the chicken and bacon filling in it. They did lots of others. They did like a four cheese one. They did a ham and uh, mozzarella. They did a pesto, except we're gonna use pesto to form a sauce that wraps around the chicken and bacon tortellini. I didn't wanna go pesto overload, but our third ingredient, which is gonna be frozen spinach. We're gonna cook it in that, use some of the water to sort of lubricate the pesto which is going to surround that tortellini it's that simple and this should be delicious but we'll get the spinach going first this is actually chopped spinach that's sold in these like nuggets like that they're amazing we get this all the time because anything that's in the freezer 
this is really sad, but like the freezer aisle is amazing. You can get like whole meals in there. You can get like like lobster, like real good stuff that, especially in our hometown, we think, oh, can't get that anywhere. But you go to the freezer aisle and it's like some, it's like a treasure hunt for me. It's, and I end up buying spinach. This is gonna be like a true like five minute dinner in real time, obviously, if you weren't filming it. Um, but like this cooks in three minutes. Anyway, fresh pasta is fantastic. This, all it needs to do is just warm. We'll use some of that water to mix with this. And then Bob's your uncle. I would really wanna do this last, but I think it's gonna taste just as good cold because our starter, if I let them go cold, they'll be a little bit flimsy and saggy. And um, yeah, I want them to taste good. You know what, it's taken me longer to boil the water in the pan than it will to actually make that recipe. Anyway, whilst that still boils, it's time to get those coconut rings, that's what I'm gonna call them, out. There we go, can you see they're nice and lightly, they've almost looked like they're blue in color. Amazing. Lightly toasted all around and they have held their shape. I am not touching them at all until they're fully cooled down because they'll get stronger the more they cool. We can drizzle them on chocolate, leave them on the wire rack, have them at the end. I'm very close to burning my arm with the other stuff. And the water's ready. <laughs> Brilliant. And whilst I walk over to my water, which is now boiling for the spinach, I just wanted to say thank you to whoever you are, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching my videos and supporting me. I really appreciate it. And like little spinach hand grenades, we're just gonna plop them in like that. And look how it's gonna make the water slightly greeny. It's gonna infuse it with spinachy flavor. And look, there's like little specks of the spinach that's already chopped, like I say, starting to part. So I'm gonna go for about five. Cook away my beauty and give me some spinach infused water. Now, the step I'm about to do, I don't want you to do this. I want you to chuck the pasta in right now. But for some of you, you might find this interesting. I wanna just show you the color of that water. And my sieve is gonna hate me for this. Look at that. That's bonkers, isn't it? It looks like some sort of crazy Mountain Dew concoction or something, doesn't it? But that is spinach infused water that we can cook the pasta in. But when you do it, just literally chuck the pasta in with that water. The one benefit of doing it like this is you can actually control when you add the spinach in. So that's what I will do. But if you just want to chuck it all in, that's fine. Then just drain it off. So in that goes. <laughs> I just wanted to show you, look, it's like a swamp. Actually, I'm not going to use all of it. Yeah, I'm going to reserve this so I can use that to mix with my pesto. And it's almost boiling, so we can get the pasta in now. You're essentially just cooking through and warming it, like three minutes max. I know, it's like the whole four, three, two, one thing. Today I'm not gonna season, but you guys are normally flexible like that. Let me use that normally, salt, pepper right now. Tell you what, Parmesan, go really well with this. But we're gonna stick to the three. Oh, pesto. See, that's coating the tortellini now. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And we've got our spinach which we'll push in now. We'll add a little bit more spinach water as well and work in with the pesto. So let's just go for it. I would just love to drench it in cheese, but that is a blooming good meal on its own. All right, let's get back to these things, which actually do, let's be honest, look a little bit boring right now. But one good thing is they are like holding their shape now they've cooled down uh, and we can get a little bit crazy with some melted chocolate on top. This is just some melted dark chocolate. Oh, I might do a real cheeky one where I actually take this, dunk it in the chocolate. So you've got a whole chocolate, oh, that's a naughty one. And then drizzle as well. Oh, why not? That suddenly looks way tastier in my opinion. This next step is gonna be great. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna do some fritters. These are gonna be carrot fritters, nice and easy. Now this is why I did these last and before the pasta dish because I feel like fritters, you wanna have them either hot, or you can freeze them and take them for a picnic and stuff, but they will start to go a bit saggy and meh. We don't want that, we don't want saggy and meh. Okay, so that is one carrot. I'm gonna go for about three. So about 120 grams, roughly. Get your scales out of uh, carrot or uh, other vegetable of your choice. You could use a parsnip. Mmm, festive. Oh, there we go. Like a sandcastle of carrot. Uh, unfortunately, though, we don't want it to be moist. So what you wanna do, uh, we'll do this in little batches, but just to show you once, we get uh, a sheet of kitchen towel, dump, you know, a good handful in there, another sheet on top, and give it a good squeeze to dry it out. Urgh. Otherwise, you have all that water in your frying when we're frying a bit, it'll be like, ah. and it will help it bond as well. 
I'm just editing this video and it seems that the latest culprit of a blob on the uh, lens is the grating the carrot. I'm super sorry about that. Obviously there's a lot going on when I film on my own. I do my best to spot it. So uh, I did avoid it quite well accidentally as it is. So sorry guys. So I've got a lot of moisture out of this. I'm really happy with that. But if you feel like you've done your best and it's still a little wet, maybe add an extra like five grams of flour. As you can see, this will really dry it out straight away. It's kind of half the purpose and to help bond it and the eggs. And I'm gonna be cheeky, I, you know, you guys have said I can do this, so I am gonna season this with a load of pepper. I'm just gonna uh, uh, chuck some salt in like that. So let's just bring it all together, let the egg coat those carrots, the flour, grip it all together, and it should become a little bit more moldable. Now, the, what you're looking for is if you can pick it up and roughly shape it and it will hold it shape. If it doesn't hold it shape, maybe get some more flour, but I'm really, really happy with that. Never made carrot fritters before, it's quite exciting. I didn't really think of it like this. I mean, you call them fritters, but as a vegetarian option, this could be, well, if it works, that's if it works, it could be a real nice alternative for a burger, couldn't it? Oh no, I just set this up, and as you know, I hate frying, and my battery is about to go, folks. Great. I'm probably gonna be in the Let's drop this in. Oh. Yeah, that's firmed up already. It's getting some crispness on there. Merry Christmas. I'm actually feeling confident to get all four on the go. Keep my eye on the first batch and just make sure we get the crispness and hopefully a nice color on there and then just flip the others. Oh, this is working out amazing. I remember folks, I once stayed up till like 2 a.m. and queued up to get the latest Grand Theft Auto video. Now look at me getting excited over carrot fritters. Just while they're frying, I knew these videos were popular when someone tagged me in a TV show. I forget, was it France? It was either France or Italy, sorry, I know it's quite vague, where they'd actually done the, one of my 4321 videos. Every single recipe from it was on the show. And I was like, do I complain about that or should I feel honored? And in a way, I felt kind of honored. So if you see any carrot fritters being made on the French or Italian TV show in the next few weeks, let me know. Looks a bit like fried chicken, doesn't it? Oh, I pushed it to try and get a nice crunch on there, which we should get. You could keep going if you want to really, really crisp it up, but um, I hopefully get a nice soft texture in the middle. They're gonna lose their crunch by the second, so we're gonna finish off with a nice simple one. This is a Nutella milkshake, which I think sounds amazing. Uh, let's go. Oh, the only thing I will say about this Nutella I got, they got this one called Nutella, but it says plus cocoa. What does this mean? Oh. Oh yeah, fat reduced cocoa. Hmm. So you could eat a whole jar and not feel bad. We do that anyway. Tastes continental. Mmm. Wow. Looks like I've got a helper. Love it. This is some really good high quality ice cream with uh, vanilla pod specks in there. Nice. Which Mrs. B will be consuming later. No doubt in my mind. What's that show you watch at the moment? Motherland. Motherland. Oh, I love it. I've watched it all now though. All three series. What am I going to do? I'm going to have to talk to you. <laughs> Two dollops. Two tablespoons, two big old slabs. I mean, when you're making a milkshake like this, you can just spin around with it anyway. You can play around with the ratios, can't you? But there we go, three ingredients. As we turn it over, the milk's gonna fall to the bottom, which should hopefully, hopefully help this whiz up. Thank you. See that? I love that. Look at the, the contrast, we've made a gradient. Nice. Spreading the Nutella just around the inside and the outside edge of the glass. All of a sudden you can charge like double the price for that, all right? Nutella vanilla infused milkshake. Well, there we go then, folks. Um, what a banquet to have. Uh, Mrs. B's lingering in the background. Conveniently, I have a feeling that they're all gonna taste really good in their own way. I'm not sure about these. That's gonna be stonking. That smells so good. It's got a bit cold now, disappointingly. These should hopefully still have a bit of crunch. So let's go. Carrot fritters. I think that these will be amazing with like a lemon pepper mayo. Look at that surface. Oh, you're being dainty. I am. Should I, should I just be eating? Mmm. Huh? Is that just carrot? Carrot, egg and flour. Very nice. I'll tell you what, season that flour, dunk mm -hmm. that in a, it needs a dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. At first I was like, oh, it's crispy. And there's not much else. But then you kind of get like this sort of, sweetness of the carrot, it's like texture to it. 
It's very nice. You like it? Needs needs sauce. Yeah, like a like a mayo or anything. Okay. So this is a spinach chicken bacon tortellini with pesto. Mmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. The pesto just laces around that. I've got a little hint of the basil. You get that? Yeah, that's nice and simple. Mm. Tasty. Yeah, Very that's nice. a good point. I didn't say that. this. This this whole thing has taken me just over an hour and fifteen minutes to do the whole thing, and that's mm. filming it as well. So you know, you really could do this in a flash. I'm not sure about these. Why? Well, I don't know. I tried them before I could bake them, and it was just banana and coconut, which isn't really nice. Mmm. Extremely chewy. You almost want to dunk the whole thing in chocolate. Mmm. I feel like we need to. At first it's like the toasted coconut mm. taste, then you get the banana, and then it partially turns into chewing gum for a bit. <laughs> I just dunk one whole Yeah, just fully bit. coat it and have a bite and see what that... I think she just likes chocolate. Still mm. gummy? Mmm. <laughs> but, as a three ingredient thing, I mean two, it worked. Mm. Not my favourite out of the lot. I would make it again though. Okay. Maybe you could use coconut flour or just whiz up the desiccated coconut. I know he likes about the flakes, how they're bigger when you mm. whiz them up, just to get them super fine so it's more like a powder. That That's could nice work. Though. They're like those, what are they called? Macaroons. Yes, macaroons. That's what they taste like. Yeah. Mmm. Is that good? Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Yeah? I see how you got one straw. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Those straws need to be wider. I think we need like scaffold poles or something because it's such a thick milkshake, but... That is amazing. That is so good. I think oh it's God. the richness of that Nutella with the cocoa, you know. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. As I say, it didn't take very long for me to make all four of those at all. And I'm a novice in the kitchen. I started out just poaching the egg. As you know, don't forget to subscribe if you have not already and press the notification button to be aware of all new uploads. And do check out the rest of the 4321 playlist and all the other videos here on the channel or the website if you're in that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon. Right, you want to finish that milkshake? No, I've got a sugar headache. <laughs> Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Uh, folks, off camera, Mrs B did just say to me... Don't make those. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't make those. Make those, make those, make those. Don't make those. What was your opinion on the Samoa cookies? They were disgusting, sorry. Really? <laughs> yeah, it just didn't taste nice. The carrot fritters were nice though. Yeah? Yes.